Okay, so I may have to adjust this, but um, so if you want to grab a chair, you will definitely need drumsticks, that's for sure. And other than that, we have no idea what else we need because it's going to be a surprise as we go. Okay. <laughs> All right, so let's open the prayer and we'll get our bodies moving. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time, for us to get together and for us to move the bodies that you have given to us. Lord, thank you for these bodies. Thank you for the ability to move. Thank you for the ability to, um, to breathe and to get our heart rates up. Lord, we thank you for each heartbeat and every breath that we take in. Lord, um, we just ask that you be with us as we go through this time together tonight and um, that this offering that we give up to you and how we, we move our bodies and how we worship you through movement, that it be pleasing to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so we are going to get started. So we are in our second week of going through Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. So in case you missed that, last week we covered our first part. So those verses are, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. So we covered grace last week. We talked about grace. Um, this week we're talking about saved and what it means to be saved. So we've got kind of a big thing to cover tonight. <laughs> but we're going to do it as we move. So you will not need drumsticks yet. I'm going to turn my mic down a little bit because that is just a little too loud for me. All right, let's just warm our bodies up a little bit here. I feel like that's not quite loud enough there. Trying to get the sound right here is a little tricky. The verdict was... There we go. Okay, so no drumsticks yet, and we can stay standing first. And we're just gonna step tap. The verdict okay. was guilty. Tap. Case closed. A little snap if you want to. <laughs> no chance for me to ever leave this prison of my sin. Now I know it might So Kim and I are here together, just the two of us. <laughs> but those of you who will be getting this at home. Oh, 
<laughs> then we'll talk about the good stuff that's on the other side. So, side lunges, here we go. All right. Now, sin has one penalty. The single penalty for sin is death. The only way to get rid of it, once it has been there, is death. Which means, if you commit a sin, I'm going to say something as silly as, Mom told you you couldn't have a cookie till after supper, and you snuck a cookie from the cookie jar. That's a sin. According to God, God being the holy God that he is, that sin is pun punishable by death. Now, that sounds crazy to us because we are not holy. <laughs> But sin is sin. There's no sin that's greater than any other. And stop and rest. Awesome. Woo, grab some water. We're going to pick our next three exercises. And we're going to talk about the other side of sin. <laughs> okay, so let's see. I'm going to roll our first one here. Woo. Oh, we just did that one. We're not doing that again. <laughs> okay, curl press. So we are going to need some weights. So you might want to grab two water bottles or two cans of soup if you're at home, two light weights, whatever you've got. Woo. Oh, another one we just did. Man. Push-ups. Ooh, our arms are going to get it today. <laughs> We've got one more. You better pick this one. Get us out of our, our trouble that we're in. <laughs> okay, what do we got? What do we got? <laughs> Side lunges again. <laughs> uh, let's see. Try that one. Feel free to go faster. 
as long as you're keeping form, okay? All right, then we got our high knees. So, we're marching. Get those knees up. Very good. Last 
cups. He paid the price so that we could be saved from eternity spent away from him so that we could spend eternity with him. And what does that look like? Now, I already told you kind of a little bit, right? Like, think of all the good things in the world and think of all the bad things gone. No bad at all anymore, only good. That sounds good, sounds great, but it's even better than that. It is even better than that. Revelation 21, 4 says, He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. So what are you saved to? You are saved to a life of eternity spent with your Father, and spent absent of death, tears, pain, mourning, crying, all the stuff that makes life here so hard. <laughs> That's what you're saved to. So, now, if you will find a comfortable position, whether you are sitting on the floor, in a chair, wherever you are, just a place where you can sit comfortably, and allow your whole body to relax. I'm gonna make sure that this thing doesn't choose to send us on a weird song here. Okay. And just close your eyes. Feel your lungs expand as you breathe in. And feel your shoulders drop and your lungs contract just a little bit as you breathe out. And breathe in. And out. together today and the message that that we discussed some of it was difficult to hear Lord I thank you for for giving me the ability and the courage to talk about those things that are that are not really easy for us to listen to and they're not easy for our heart to hear Lord but it's true Lord none of us here on this earth deserve the gift of life that you have given to us. None of us here on this earth have even come close to your holiness, your perfection, your righteousness. And Lord, we thank you so much for sending your Son, for giving us the gift of holiness and righteousness through his life and through his death. Lord, I can't imagine a life spent without you, without hope, without joy, without peace, without love, without kindness. Lord, to think that nothing I can do, nothing any of us can do, can possibly get us to the point where we are able to be face to face with you. Lord, we are so thankful for the gift of eternal life that comes only through your Son. And I pray, Lord, that whoever is listening to this, either right now in this room, or is listening to it later as it's recorded, Lord, that you will open their hearts, that you will open their eyes, not only to your holiness, but to their depravity as well. Lord, if we can't admit our depravity, 
we can't turn away from it. So it's important, Lord, that, that you open our eyes, that you would shine light in those dark places. Show us where we need to change. Show us where we need to repent. And give us the courage to do so. Lord, as we go through the rest of our week, I pray that you will help us to be beacons of light for the world around us. And Lord, that you will illuminate, illuminate the dark places in our own hearts where we are falling short. That you will give us grace in those places, but that you will help us to grow, to learn, and to turn from those things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, I forget what else she sings. 